is a CBS News special report. I'm Scott Pelley reporting from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Good morning. We're glad you're with us because if all goes well, we're about to see something that none of us will ever see again, the launch of a space shuttle. Atlantis is on the launch pad set to lift off on the 135th and final space shuttle mission. The shuttle program coming to an end after 30 years of flight. On board Atlantis are Commander Chris Ferguson, Pilot Doug Hurley, and Mission Specialist Sandy Mag Magnus and Rex Walheim, seen here earlier this morning as they were heading out to launch pad 39A. All of them are space travel veterans. The purpose of this historic 12-day mission is to carry a year's worth of supplies and spare parts to the International Space Station. Joining us as we watch the launch are Dr. Steve Robinson, an astronaut who has made four shuttle flights and CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood. Bill, the weather has been deep, has been bedeviling this launch That's so right. far today, but apparently not at the moment. Well, you know what? It really has come down to the wire. They were concerned about clouds forming, perhaps a little bit of light rain, because we always forget that after they take off, if they had an engine failure, they'd have to attempt an emergency return here to the Kennedy Space Center, and they need good weather for that. They did sign a waiver. The forecast officially is no-go for that return to launch site abort. Very unusual, but they've decided the chance for rain is small, and they don't see it as a major problem. We have about two minutes before the end of the countdown. Steve, I wonder what's going on in the space shuttle at this moment among the astronauts? Well, they're in listening mode. They're not talking a lot. They're listening to the uh, the ground teams do the final preparations, but actually it's very peaceful in there right now. Um, it's game day, and so they're, uh, what your job is when you're an astronaut strapped into a shuttle that's about to launch is think about the next few seconds. What's going to go uh, what's going to happen and what could happen and if different contingencies happen what will you do next and what's the next worst failure so it's a it's kind of a chess game you have going on in your mind of preparation there are a number of what are called abort scenarios depending on whether an engine is lost at a certain point in flight they could actually land in Europe that of course has never happened before and there's even an option for turning the space shuttle around in midair and flying back here to the Kennedy Space Center and that of course has never happened before this is the third 33rd flight of the shuttle Atlantis and uh, Bill Harwood give me a little sense of what this mission is all about well you know it's 30 years since the first shuttle flight we talked to Bob Crippen the pilot of that first mission yesterday and was talking about nobody knew what to expect strapping into the space shuttle on nearly 7 million pounds of thrust this wing vehicle uh, and here we are 30 years 135 flights later I don't think we'll ever see a vehicle like this again uh, the majesty of it, Rex Walheim, the flight engineer, talked about the size, the, the sheer spectacle of a shuttle taking off. They're going to replace it with smaller vehicles, cheaper, easier to operate, but they won't be as dramatic. We are approaching 30 seconds now to the final launch of the space shuttle, the 135th mission. And we've got a hold in the countdown, Scott. And they're holding at 31 seconds. What is that about? They're checking a launch commit criteria violation. We're waiting to see what the resolution might be. They can hold for about two minutes here before they would have to scrub. They're trying to get clearance to go. It's going to take a minute. The engineering team is looking at the problem. I haven't heard what it is yet. Uh, but obviously they're hopeful they can get this resolved. We get a verification that the GBA has fully retracted. They're making sure the gaseous vent arm, I believe, is fully retracted. That's the, the big beanie that sits on top of the external tank that carries vapor away from the liquid oxygen section. They're making sure that it's fully retracted. I think that's what they said. They've gotten some indication this piece of equipment hasn't pulled completely away from the shuttle. Apparently. That's great. That's what we're uh, looking at right now. There's a picture of it there. To the right-hand side is the giant external fuel tank of the shuttle. They're going to press on, Scott. They're going to clear this and pick up the count. The clock has stopped at 31 seconds. We expect it to start again here shortly. Enormous crowds around the Kennedy Space Center. They estimated as many as 750,000 people all around this part of Florida have come from all over the country to see what, again, no one will ever see again. A flight of a space shuttle. All right, guys. An enormously majestic thing.
That uh, huffing noise you hear in the background is the auxiliary power unit that provides the muscle to move the engine nozzles during launch. You can hear the exhaust uh, pumping out the back of the order. We're ready to go. Just said they're ready to go. Very good. And launch director, with that cleanup, we're going to go ahead and proceed. Yes, sir. Please do. All right. And I'll going to start the countdown. We're going to cut the clock here momentarily. And GLS, you can resume the clock on your mark. I copy that. Countdown clock will resume on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. Now 30 seconds and counting to the launch of Atlantis. Let's listen in to the communications, to the capsule, to the aircraft, the spacecraft, I should say, as we go down to the final seconds before launch. Firing chain is armed. 15. Go for main engine start. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. Two. One, zero, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Program, Houston. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. 24 seconds into the flight, roll program complete. Atlantis now heads down, wings level on the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Space Station. 40 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines throttling back to 72% of rated performance in the bucket, reducing stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic for the final time. Breaking the sound barrier now. Engines now revving up, standing by for the throttle up call. Atlantis, go at throttle up, no action, DPDT. Nothing like it in the world. Bill Harwood, what are we seeing now? We have a camera on the side of the external tank that they beam down to show the view from the orbiter itself. They're obviously looking for any signs of foam insulation that might come off during the ascent uh, that could pose a debris threat to the shuttle. Uh, nothing obvious in the early moments of flight. There was a warning alarm for a pressure alarm in the cockpit. Mission Control told them no problem on that, no action required. So, so far, so good. Shuttle astronaut Steve Robinson, what's going on in there at this moment? You've done this four times. Well, I wish I were on there right now, but those uh, those guys are having the time of their life, and they're as focused as uh, human beings can possibly be. Uh, they've had uh, they had a an alarm go off that turns out to be a transducer on the uh, cabin pressure. Um, and so mission control radioed up and told them not to worry about it. There go the solid rocket boosters jettisoning, jettisoning after two minutes of flight. And Scott, they're up about 30 miles in altitude right now, going about a mile a minute already. A mile a second, I should say, already. The space shuttle running now on its three main engines, draining the fuel out of that enormous fuel tank, which we will also see separate from the orbiter here in just a few minutes. Steve, everything looks safe, going well? Look beautiful, look fantastic, just like a space shuttle launch. Atlantis, two engine towel. That call Bob Capcom. Orr is here at the Kennedy Space Center with us uh, up on the roof of this structure, which just shook like it was in an earthquake. Bob Orr, what are you seeing there? Scott, this never gets old. I have to tell you, when you're on the roof, you feel a shuttle launch more than see it. We had a relatively low cloud cover, and as the shuttle lifted off, it was a spectacular view here. It drew applause uh, from everyone outside. It disappeared quickly into the clouds, but we could still feel the vibration. It was a majestic launch, and it was one that just three hours ago that didn't look possible. But so far, everything is going great, Scott. It's a big day and a good news day here at Kennedy Space Center. An estimated 750. 50,000 people have come to this part of Central Florida to see this spectacle. Kelly Cobiea is out there with some of them. Kelly, what do they see? Scott, there were a 
series of cheers when the shuttle went up, when you saw that big flame out here 12 miles away from the launch pad, another cheer when you heard the rumble of the engines, and then the crowd gave one final round of applause for the shuttle program as that shuttle disappeared up into the clouds. People here maybe wiped away a tear or two, but mostly it was smiles, picture taking, and lots and lots of applause. We are four minutes after liftoff at this point. They are very likely heading all the way to orbit. They have passed the point that they would land in minutes, Europe if there was a problem with the space shuttle main engines. So far, no sign of any problems of any kind on and this mission. What happens next, Steve Robinson? Miles in altitude. Just listening to NASA, uh, Rob Navius there describing it well. The solid rocket boosters came off and now they're in a, they're, they're in a very smooth portion of the ascent. Uh, the uh, the whole shuttle is losing weight as it uses up fuel, and so the, the G's are building up on the crew and on the vehicle, and uh, so they're being pressed into their seats more and more and, and looking forward to, to uh, getting above the atmosphere, rolling heads up, and then what happens is the shuttle goes up and then co turns over this way to go fast to reach orbital velocity. That's what's happening. Well, we can only experience it live one time, but the magic of television is we can look at it again and again, and I'd like to see it one more time. We'll We'll re-rack the tape and have a look at the launch. Here it was just five minutes ago. One, zero, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. Bill Harwood, there is the nothing like this. There is nothing like this on the drawing boards. We are not likely to see a spacecraft of this size, complexity, and capability, uh, perhaps in our lifetimes. No, we're really not. I was just thinking, watching it come off the pad, that I'm never going to see that again. And, and we're all so used to it. The shuttle is almost iconic in this country in terms of that, that winged orbiter that we're all so used to, and we're not going to see it again. It's a, It's a... It's quite a moment. Steve, you have flown on four shuttle flights. You've been with NASA how long? 30? In one more week, it'll be 35 years. 35 years. What does this mean to you, seeing the last shuttle go? Well, to tell you the truth, Scott, I'm kind of mission focused. I'm the uh, lead Capcom for this uh, mission, which means I'm one of the guys in mission control that actually speaks to the crew. So at 3 o'clock tomorrow morning, uh, I'll be in mission control back in Houston and starting my job here. So I'm very focused on the crew, their readiness, and the mission ahead of them. Four crew members on this flight. Only four. Only four, usually seven on a shuttle flight. Why only four? Well, the idea is uh, normally when we launch a shuttle to the International Space Station, we have a rescue uh, capability with another shuttle behind it. Well, clearly we don't have that now. And so if we do need to um, park these guys on the International Space Station, we'd have to bring them down on a phased series of Soyuz, Russian Soyuz spacecraft and uh, force as many as we can handle. We're going to go back down to the live picture of the shuttle. We are seven minutes after liftoff, and in about a minute or so, the main engines of the shuttle will shut down as planned, and the orbiter will be orbiting the Earth at, believe it or not, eight times the speed of a rifle bullet. Bill Harwood, what will the astronauts be doing on this 12-day mission? It's a very important mission for the International Space Station, Scott. You know, they have some private companies trying to build unmanned cargo ships to take over for the shuttle to keep the supplies going to the space station to support a six-person crew. They haven't flown yet. NASA's concerned that if they run into any technical problems, they'd like a little bit of a hedge against that, some insurance. This flight's going to take up enough equipment, really, to keep the station crew good for a full year through 2012 in case the commercial companies run into some problems. We should be about 30 seconds from main engine cutoff. And is it at that point, Steve, that we see the external tank fall away? Uh, 20 seconds after that. Um, what the crew is uh, undergoing uh, 3G press down through their chest right now. It's hard to breathe. They're looking forward to that uh, main engine cutoff, which means the rocket engine stop and the thrust stops, and then you're now floating in space. 
And we should see that main engine cut off momentarily. You can start to see some atmospheric effects there. There still is an atmosphere up there. They're very high, but it's a, an interesting thing to watch. Well, we just heard confirmation of main engine cutoff. Let's wait for the external tank to separate from the orbiter. That's the orbiter at the top. You're looking at the bottom of the Atlantis at the top of the screen, the bottom of the screen. There goes the external fuel tank falling away. The camera is literally on the external fuel tank. Atlantis there goes the Atlantis Commander Chris Ferguson will be rising Atlantis into space. They are now safely in orbit and it is the last time that anyone will ever see that. A very successful launch today. Atlantis is safely in space on the final shuttle mission. There will be more about all of this on your local news on this CBS station on cbsnews.com and tonight on the CBS Evening News. Until then, I'm Scott Pelley, CBS News at the Kennedy Space Center. For news 24 hours a day, go to cbsnews.com.